welcome to another truly inspiring episode of Dr. Kamini Rao's Masterclass. I think dance helped me out to, it was an antidepressant to me. And I was bored with dance, I hated dance, I ran away from dance and, and then finally I could find that aha moment, okay. So this is what dance is all about. Dance is a discipline, just like medicine, etc. Yes. It's a process, it's yes. a discipline. We were all taught to dance to the music. Now they are dancing with music. And there's a difference, or at least listen to music. But Parmini, now you've actually trained over 500 students. Have you got some instances where students have really impressed you, which you could share with us? and uh, tell us uh, how did they really sort of touch those uh, chords in you and uh, become famous even if you don't want to mention their names it's okay. No, no, I, I'd, love I'd love to, to uh, hear about them. No, I, my first batch of students now Kiran Subramaniam and Sandhya Kiran, Dr. Sesha Dreyengar, he's a doctor by profession and all of these uh, and Supriya, I mean, I don't want to name everybody. I mean, I know. there are so many students, uh, Nivedita Malya in Phoenix and then Suma in Boston and Sri Devi uh, in Raleigh and Viba in, uh, uh, you know, uh, Washington, Virginia. All of these students learned, not all of them wanted to become teachers. They all got married had their families, most of them were engineers, some of them are working, some of them are not working, but all of them love dance. And therefore, they are teaching their students in a way that I taught them. So, my learning, my teaching is carried on. Carried on. They have been affected, they have been impressed in a certain way that they are also, see, I don't want to be a very close-minded, rigid-minded saying, I taught you like this and therefore you should do like that. I keep telling my students, please don't dance like me because you have to dance like you. You have a different mind. And so, so many people like Kiran and Sandhya are doing so well. Their husband and wife, they got married when they were in my class. It's a love marriage. They have one, they are Are you are romantic by nature? To be very frank, I romance only with Krishna. I am not a romantic person not in with life. Rai. No. 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 But you had a love marriage. Yes, but then you know at 22 and I'm talking about the 70s, what did we know about romance? Uh, everybody said, yeah, he's a good looking, he's very zing. Then we said, yeah, we are in love. I'm not saying he's an extremely nice man and I really love him, you know, but not in the terms of running around trees and romance oh, and all of those. Yeah. Trees and, uh, and I mean, uh, for us, okay, uh, for people like us, I mean, romance was very different uh, than it is. It's more a stable marriage. A stable right. marriage and caring and loving. But I love my Krishna. I really romance with him and I dance about him. I, I, I cry with him. I make love to him. I, 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 I make him laugh. I. I cry for him, I make him cry. So, that kind of romance, I don't think I can have with any other human being, is what I'm trying to say. Because I think, uh, uh, it, it, I'm, in a, I'm at a space where I'm just, I just love my dance. That's in your DNA. Yes, I suppose. Isn't it? Yes. So, but that's, that's what is passion. Yes. Commitment, yes. passion. I mean, like you, whatever. and you know, I, 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 I mean, when all of us are saying, oh my God, and you are so passionate about your work. And then every time you bring a baby out, you know, yeah. and you love it. And then you will say, oh my God, I don't want to do anything else in my life. And I, it's the same thing. From where I ran away from dance and say, you know what, I don't ever want to dance again. And I moved to Bangalore. And now I'm saying in a matter of 45 years, I will never do anything else other than dance. Even if I am, hopefully I won't be born another time. But if I am born, yes, I only want to be a dancer. Because it just Not gives me... Not an idea specialist, <laughs> by any chance. Yes, I mean, uh, I want wanted to be, I mean, now I want to be a neurosurgeon. Because I love the way the brain works. And uh, I have registered myself for a PhD in Jain University to talk about the, uh, the, the tangibles and the intangibles of dance 
when neuroscience as you said you know the the, the, the transmitters are uh, so much a part of dance which we don't even realize you know as dancers we are looking at very very different things but it does something very different in the brain so yeah hopefully i should be able to do that and in my next life yes i would like to be a dancer and a neurosurgeon wow <laughs> so it's a combination combination and yeah. hopefully hopefully you will be interviewing me as a dancer Oh you want to be a dancer. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, you should. And I so, I is totally believe that you know there is no age for learning dance. Absolutely. You know, you can just uh, you just experience the love of dance any time. In fact, I also did dance when I was young, but of course I was not that lucky that my parents told me to continue dance. So they made me learn French and then I did extremely well in French. but to do any more uh, french i had to go to paris i learned it at alliance france mm. and then they said that no going to france because i had to teach french then mm. and my father said nothing doing you have to go across to do medicine so that was also down the drain so i had to go into medicine because during my time it was only medicine or engineering, engineering that's all yes. we didn't have all these other things yeah. so there goes down the drain but then i mean i don't regret it that uh, i didn't do it so my daughter did it but again this is the same story yeah. medicine no no take so much of your time That's that you've got no time to do anything and by the time you really look up your hair is all white your <laughs> bones don't move and uh, yeah then you tell your next generation no, the thing to do is something. you know we all help the humanity in some way you in your way I Absolutely. in my own way, Absolutely. and um, you know my mother was a very very integral part of who I am today, because if she hadn't taken the time, as a young widow, she was only thirty years when she was widowed, and uh, she never she took me as the soul and whole of her life as a project, and saw to it that. she drove me to class every day and you know was with me and even till the time she died when she died a couple of years ago when she was 84 till then she was engaged with my dance and uh, so i think that's very important uh, that is a very uh, i mean i should say that with my mother and you know re- uh, my husband the rest of the family you know because dance is a very noisy uh, thing you know there's noise all the time around you know people coming going and In spite of all that, I had a very, very uh, solid uh, family support. That's yeah, extremely that's important. extremely important. Absolutely. And uh, yeah, I suppose it's just the grace of God. Not, uh, uh, I mean, whether you're a doctor or an engineer or a lawyer, you know, you have a certain samskara, you have a certain energy, you have a certain purpose. And I just surrender to that and say, okay, this is what I'm supposed to do, and I do it to my best. What about children? to what extent do they adhere to your dancing my daughter uh, she is a prodigy in natvanga she has done she can say the sholakat when she was 3 years old and uh, you know she did natvangam for my dance performance she is a very good dancer but she knows that her aspirations and her ambitions cannot be fulfilled with dance as a profession you know i cannot impose dance on her because i am a dancer because she says look your path is different i love dance i'll escape into dance whenever i she is depressed she'll come to dance she catches it like that and uh, but she says look i want to be in the corporate world and i want to earn my millions i said you can never earn millions in dance you know it's only uh, you get everything that you get is pure joy and intangible she said and so I let her you know she belongs to this generation she wants to you know move up the co- corporate career ladder and you know be successful in the sense How early she she's she will be 40 next year wow yeah yeah and That's the grandchildren are uh, yeah they are still young and of course she doesn't want me to dance because uh, teach them dance because they are boys <laughs> yeah what would boys do i dancing? mean i i, I, I thought that they do very gracefully yeah i da- my both my dancers to prominent students are boys i mean kiran and dr seshadri but somehow she believes that let's see i mean if their destiny is dance nobody can change that but right now one of the grandsons is very 
uh, drawn to dance. I mean, I can see it in his body and the way he moves and all that. But I was telling Hrithik Roshan, everybody is dancing. I mean, all the Bollywood actors are dancing. Yeah, they are good absolutely. dancers, you know. Uh, but anyway, it's, great. it's their uh, this thing. So, if only one daughter? One daughter and mm -hmm. then I have two grandsons. And two grandsons. Yes. So, uh, that's great. So, you just had one daughter only? Only. Because by the time I... My, after my uh, first child, when I started dancing and by the time I had my second child, I was so busy teaching and I didn't want to take a break again. Yeah. I, so, I just I carried on. Yes. Well, it's okay because, you know, once you've had this and then you've got a successful career. Career, yes. When did this uh, Bangalore Haba came? How did it come about? How did Actually, me and Nandini are very good friends. I mean, she… What is Nandini doing now? She is uh, uh, in and out of, she is, I think she is planning to go and settle down abroad and uh, she is doing her businesses and, uh, but her primary love is dance yeah. and uh, she is a student of the renowned guru Dr. Padma Subramaniam mm -hmm. and I was also a dancer. So, we were friends and then we just sat down once and said, okay, now dance has done so much good to us, what are we going to give back? to dance. So, we said, okay, we will start the Bangalore Habba, where, you know, you have all, I mean, because we also felt that the children of this generation is not exposed to the traditional art forms. Mm -hmm. And uh, so, we said, okay, let us do that, you know. So, with the help of the government, with the help of the corporate sponsorship, we ran it for 10 years. But from when we started in 2003 and we ended in 2013, Bangalore changed, people changed you know traffic changed oh, it was everything changed horrific. so people the first year people could come from Korumangala to Chaudaya to see an Arjun Sajnani play but then it was it would take only half an hour uh, but uh, by 2010 it was taking two hours from Korumangala to uh, you know and the work stress changed it increased and then people's just interest changed people changed and uh, 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 we used to collect uh, money so that we can pay the traditional uh, singers, I mean the stalwarts. But uh, all the sponsors wanted Bollywood. So, uh, in the year one we had 75% classical content and 25% popular content. But by 2011, it was 75% popular content and 25% classical content. So, they used to say, no, nobody comes for uh, performances, so cut this performance, that cut, uh, that music festival, dance festival and just get jazz and pop and uh, Bollywood and it was not our scene. We were an arts organization. We wanted to collect money so that we can promote classical arts. But were we able to get funds for it? It was very tough. It was so very, was very tough. And it no, the government didn't bother us, but the government didn't support us. They just didn't bother us. So we used to, they used to give, we used to have performances in the parks so that you know the older people and children who are playing in the parks can listen to something classical so that they will create an affinity towards classical arts. But it just became very, very difficult for us, you know, and year after year going begging these that corporates. Was the it was a biggest. it was a biggest problem and uh, there was a time we used to pay Pandit Jasrajji 5 lakhs and we used to pay, pay Sonu Nigam 30 lakhs, you know, we, that was not gelling with us. I said, you know, he was such a great singer and then so we said, okay, maybe, you know, the, for everything there is a shelf life. I, so we said, okay, Bangalore Abbas shelf life is there while people still had good ideas and good memories and we also had good memories of I the Hapa. Very good yes. So we Bangalore. created a brand. I wish the government had taken it and run it. But did the government mm -hmm. not say why you didn't continue? We wanted them to continue. But somehow they you know the moment it goes to government then it becomes, you know caste and very bureaucratic and then it becomes political and I suppose they didn't want to get into all of this. And we as two, uh, we as two artists, we could not do much more than what we already did. So we took a conscious decision to stop it after ten years. Uh, 2003 we started, 2013 we stopped.
Yeah, and he but said, that okay. was a fulfilling experience. It was a very fulfilling experience. It was very traumatic because uh, people would say the sponsors will say we'll pay X amount and then last minute they'll say, no, you didn't do this, this. Uh, this bunting was not there, this poster was not there, so they'll cut. So it used to go from our pockets and it was very, very traumatic. But if you look back, it was a beautiful experience. People, we just feel good that we gave people, so many people enjoyed good performances for free. They didn't have to pay for anything. It all, we, we, we never charged even a single rupee. It was all given for free good performances all the stalwarts we paid them we brought them and then people enjoyed so it was something that our give back me and nandini we decided that we will give back something to the arts and artists and the city and we did our bit then how's her daughter doing she's doing very well yeah, she's, she's doing in uh, mumbai only. she's in mumbai and mm -hmm. vivek is a a good Human being. human being and so they are a loving couple with good lovely children yeah they are all settled down beautifully by the grace of so god nice. yes that's uh, nice to know because i yes. used to know suresh oh, yeah. and yeah. um, uh, jivra jalwa was a good friend of yes. my brother yes. arvind yeah. okay so okay. they are family friends okay. you know okay. those days and okay. uh, it was nice nandini i know her well yeah i'm sure she so, they're all old bangalore all and old yeah everybody knew everybody yes but, yes uh, that was a good uh, the, the yeah we so had a good uh, tenure run yes mm -hmm. we used to look forward start planning in april start begging in may you know for a show in december but it was a good experience i think it just gave us an insight as to what people on the other side of the bench thinks you know so uh, we were only looking at the habba as an artist but you know it was very interesting to see how the government was responding how the corporates were responding at on the one level and how the artists were responding at another how did level. How the artists take it? They all loved it. They all loved it. But then it was like, um, I mean, I just felt that uh, they, you know, they came in as celebrities. They never came in as a sense of participation, you know. They Though we here. were also artists, we would, we would need to, uh, we would have had to treat them as if they are celebrities and not co-artists so somewhere that was a little disappointing i wouldn't say disgruntling but disappointing but uh, that's who they are so we we just uh, gave them that importance gave them that status and uh, yeah but on the whole it was a good experience for me and andani and we were very satisfied uh, though sad and disappointed and uh, angry and uh, uh, traumatized, uh, but we were very satisfied. Because even with any failure, there's an experience to it. Absolutely. And I think failures are a stepping stone to success. You must fail in order to, and uh, that's what I keep telling my students, you know, you, they were saying, auntie, like, how do you become a, 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 a Samanya Naika in a Javali, where, you know, you're a courtesan, you're not, uh, you are providing uh, uh, sexual and sensual favours to a king and you were dancing about that and I am a, a very a moralistic, very righteous person. How do you get into that character? I said exactly, you answered your own question. It is a character, it's not you. Yeah, Unless and until you experience these emotions, those feelings, you will never know what you want to be and what you don't want to be. So, we experienced Habba in a way that it was so beautiful but then if somebody comes and asks you will you do it again I'll say no thank you unless and until you please c come and give the money here I will spend it but don't ask me to promote Habba and collect for the Habba no we had a very good because experience you know, that is the worst part. yes you know, artists are not meant to go and collect the money no. they're there to perform yeah and that's it that's it but Just uh, like all the invitees but that's what we did we collected so that we can give the give it to the other artists but we were also artists but it was very difficult for us to collect and just to convince people that performing arts was a good good for growing up children i mean you see in chennai there's a 
there is a completely different ethos, you know. It's, so it's it is always, always been. been. Very and alone. Bombay is no. a cosmopolitan, they have the theatre and then Pune has its own thing. Delhi of it's course. It's Bangalore. Because yeah, because you know it's cost population. Yes. So we didn't have anything to cling on to, you know. So we said, okay, Bhabha will be one thing where everybody can identify themselves as Bangaloreans and, you know, participate. That was our initial idea. But uh, for everything, it was, we were with a begging ball throughout. For 10 years, we have begged and said no more so begging. So, Padmini, what do you think about Bangalore as an artistic hub? What is your dream for Bangalore to make it into an artistic hub, whether it is dance or whether it is music or museum or anything? How do you change this culture? I can't because, you know what, for that I have to become the chief minister. See, the problem here is, the government is not having a vision. You know, there are so many good artists in Bangalore, in the state. And when we do a Patadikal or a, the national festivals, Hampi, they will always call outside artists. They will call a Hema Malini or they will call, I don't know, whoever. All the artists who are not from the state. Though they, that's the irony of it. They'll say, oh, we are Bangalore, Karnataka, Karnatikas, you have to do this, you have to do that in one level. But when there is a performing arts festival, they will not call anybody from the state. They'll always bring from outside the state and pay them. Okay. So the government has to be very, very clear. I We had requested the, the Department of Kannada and Culture. I said, don't organize 100 performances. Organize five performances and do it properly. You know, like every Friday uh, evening, every Friday cultural program, every Wednesday. So, on the number of people in the audience is lesser than the number of people on the stage. Who is going to be watching every Wednesday, you know? So, the government should have a vision and say, we don't have a proper museum. We don't have a proper auditorium. We don't have a, like an NCPA in, there, in Bombay. Like a music academy, we have one chowdaya, right? And uh, so, and that too, it is not, it's not uh, technically equipped, you know, it, I, it echoes. Yeah. And you know, you don't have a performing arts center and uh, you don't have a proper museum. Now, uh, Indian Music Experience, which is uh, supported by a brigade, Mr. Jay Shankar, they are doing good work. But you know, you must, you must have that passion and that you must say, okay, that's my priority. Unless and until the government takes the policy. We are all individual small people, you know, drops in the ocean. Many people, many artists are taking initiative and creating festivals and uh, providing platforms for other artists, but that's not going to work. Even this Shankar Nag auditorium and things like that, it's struggling to maintain itself. It's struggling, yeah, because, uh, you know, the government has to help and like the dance and music, like there are the Tanjavur king, apparently uh, in uh, Tanjavur, in Tanjore, in his court there were 400 dancers whom he was paying on role to dance and to create and to, you know, promote. So if the government is not supporting at all, somebody has to support. So if we have to self-support ourselves and in a, in, a, in, a, in a field where nobody wants to come and watch today, everything Everybody is watching dance on an iPhone or an Android phone and you are not experiencing anything. And it's all just about me taking a pose and posting it on the social media and everybody, 100 people will say, wow, you look beautiful. Okay, I know I look so beautiful. What? So what? How are we going to promote? So, but this has to come from the government has to take an initiative. Otherwise, art will only degenerate, not because people are bad dancers. People have... People who have taken it as a profession, how will they survive? That is the point. How, that's the point. How will they survive? They have to put but food on the table. What is your uh, sort of message to the youth today? If they want to be a Padmini Ravi, okay, and they want to say that I want to take this as a profession. So how do they start? Where do they start? How do they go about it? To be Parents very frank, Kamini, very I tell them clear. not to take it as a profession. But why? Because I'll tell you why. It's very difficult to earn in dance. See, we were, I, I, when I started, there were three student, teachers in Malayshwaram. Now there are ten teachers in one cross, you know. So there are so many people who are there and so many uh, uh, performers and they are all good. 
and there are very less platforms so everybody is clamoring for that one lobbying networking uh, you know all of those things and dancing is not the only thing that is necessary you have to do other things as well i mean you have to do all of this so i say okay why do you want to take it as a full time if you have a good job you are getting uh, 2 lakhs a month keep it you know keep 25000 rupees or that and then spend it because nobody gets paid for performing today nobody gets paid only we paid and some of the sabhas in chennai pay everybody pays and performs nobody gets paid so that's why there are so many teachers because only teaching gives you money so whether you know or not you start teaching because you get that 30000 40000 rupees a month because nobody gets performed and nobody nobody gets paid while performing so are you saying that if there are so many doctors on the street that you should not become a doctor no you can but will you be able to earn well there are so many doctors everyone is earning nobody is starving i don't know in dance is difficult in dance is very difficult because at the end of the day for a doctor i mean fortunately unfortunately people are getting sick and they'll come to you <laughs> people are getting pregnant they'll come to you but people don't want to watch people simply don't want to watch it today what is the uh, you are so stressed through the week what they want to disengage so they go to a pub they drink or they watch netflix or amazon they don't even engage in the movie they're watching movie here whatsapp uh, social media <laughs> instagram so you are you're not engaging in anything yeah you're just disengaging you're having a drink you're having a this thing going to sleep so in this how am i supposed to uh, enthuse anybody to come and watch me doing a tyagaraja kriti which was written some 500 years ago and say brochewa rava rama please come to me in the then they'll say who's rama first of all they don't even know ramayana and mahabharata the current generation it's so tough it's so sad you know you don't know the other than rama and ramayana krishna and mahabharata you ask any characters if uh, i mean one of these uh, corporate i go and do these things in the corporate world so that you know they are need not the children their own parents the employees who are parents to children they should how will they teach their child so i am asking uh, who is uh, uh, kunti they said it is ravana's mother they changed the epic only <laughs> you know so when you do when you are like this how do you teach anybody dance so for me it is very it is very important that a child at least he will know krishna means he has a flute it comes to that fundamentals rama means this is bow and this is arrow i teach from there that also they don't know they don't care so how do you get a generation which we call indians and you are talking about hindutva <coughs> i'll tell you when they go abroad they learn more dancing they more, there 100% than when they are here in yes. india they go to america they go outside the city outside the country step on a show then they will do all kinds of pujas and vratams mm. and uh, festivals and dance and music and all they are here they will they not do, do anything because see the thing is when we have something we never value it when we have something in abundance art is in the indian dna right people who said oh you should not dance now the same people are sitting sitting and watching katrina kaif's moves now how is it how is that nice and bharatanatyam dance is low all of them would have learned a bit of bharatanatyam and then they are all classical but i am saying support when you are when you are allowing your children to watch and you are all watching bollywood and hollywood today global media you can do anything with your phone you are watching belly dance so you don't want to watch your own dance because you think that's boring i don't understand are you are an indian you are doing ramanavami krishna ashtami how can you not understand when i am dancing about rama and krishna what i'll dance about michael jackson how you when you know you will appreciate when you want to appreciate you will know when you want to know you when don't all those want white to skins will tell you what a lovely ramayana then all of them will go and check exactly ramayana. like yoga yoga has been in us for 5000 years now it is taken to the west now it's become a billion dollar industry 
my yes. teacher teaches me for uh, 20 uh, for 1000 rupees per month for 12 classes and some of the teachers are teaching 2500 rupees per session you know so when it becomes an industry then so that is my point now if this is going am i going to be cynical and say there's no enough of dance nobody should learn dance no we'll have to switch the paradigm shift the paradigm and say take a different lens okay dance for external if it works it works you have to you you do what it is necessary so to take do take it as a hobby hobby or, or flip it go inside it's an external journey or an internal journey in an external journey the internal journey also remains in the internal journey you feel happy you feel proud like a and nirvana nirvana you don't have to go to any god men uh, and uh, you know to go to their ashram dance is there for you your problems and your solutions are within you you can figure it out with your dance because you go to that moment brief moment and you say ah that's, that's enough good. so we know that we are a part of a whole and there is some power i can't control with so much of technology and so much of this thing some microscopic uh, uh, virus has just shaken the world so the moment we know i and you should know as a scientist that the more we know about our body the more we know that we don't know Absolutely. it's the same thing you know you have to surrender to that power above and say okay you know what this is life and to deal with it so dance teaches us that so for me now from the external now it has become more of an internal so i am at a more peaceful state of my life with my in my relationship with dance and i am loving it more and i in whatever level in whatever way i convey to my students to be more internal and to be peaceful because if you are not in peace with your profession with your dance is very tough i'm sure peace with absolutely. any profession absolutely yeah, you have to be at peace so padmini it was a wonderful session talking to you because it actually transforms you know your mind and body into another orbit altogether because you know coming from a medical background the audience expected me to take you through how beautiful dance is hema malini and sri devi and the dream girl and all these things and you know perhaps show how glamorous dance is and yet you took us to another spiritual world and say how dance actually becomes a discipline of mind body and soul so you start to sort of integrated everything and brought a totally different dimension made it 360 degrees and says that that is an education totally different from the other type of you know uh, education that we actually deal with and this is an add on to what you're learning a perhaps a gurukul kind of thing a discipline from within one see natya shastra it says the primary source of natya is vedas yeah in vedas the vedanta or the the last part of every veda is the upanishads yes and every upanishad has said only one thing tatvamasi you are that aham brahmasmi i am that okay so i am a part of that so dr padma subramanian very clearly says in traditional performing indian performing arts we are based on that principle that we are a part of a whole and we are not disconnected like the quantum physics says like the uh, motivation speakers are saying it's all the same so natya was not created to entertain but natya was cr created to realize to experience self realization but in natya we are portraying different characters people like meryl streep said in her uh, oscar speech i i am getting the award for portraying a phenomenal extraordinary character but people in the some way in between mistake me for that character so we are just dancers we are just portraying a ram or a krishna or a devadasi but we are not devadasis we are just a medium through which the imagination of the poet flows so that that ahankara that ego that i am this which i was not long back i said oh i am padmini ravi i am a great dancer i am this i am so good at abhinaya i am so good at nritta and then one day i said wait a minute i am not doing any of this there is a power within me which is making me do it i am just a medium i am just a vehicle so that realization 
by the grace of God it has come to me. I hope it comes to everybody because we are not doing anything. I am not doing anything on my own. I am led to do and I just surrender and follow. So that is what I want to tell my students whom I teach now. I mean I ask your viewers to please go and watch and engage yes. and go to performances not to disengage. Absolutely. Yeah. So that was a fantastic message Padmi. It's been very enlightening and I can tell you that they would have had a wonderful performance of yours over here. More than the dance itself, the message which is very strong, very straight and very focused and I couldn't have asked for a better performance from you today. Totally unexpected and fresh mm. and I would say that coming from a dancer and you know coming to a medical person, this is a bolt from the blue. <laughs> Thank you so much. That is what we should have. Thank you, Thank you so much. Thank you for coming. Thank and you. I think today we've had a wonderful performance viewers from none other than Padmini Ravi and till we meet again, till our next episode, keep watching Dr. Kamni Rao's Masterclass. I am Dr. Nagaraja H.S. I have been a teacher for 55 years. I taught physics and electronics uh, in the city for over five decades. And I will be presenting myself for the master class series of Dr. Kamini Rao in the coming week. Education is such an important uh, requirement in any society that a nation is as best as its education system. If the education in a country is very good, then only the nation can prosper. And in an evolving society, an ever-changing social system, a country's survival, evolution, growth, and the requirements of the future being met will be taken care by the education system and the future is very unclear to any one of us today. The kind of society, the kind of requirements for the population on this planet to survive will be changing so much that we should produce the brightest of minds to take care of this planet for its uh, existence and happy and comfortable life of the population by the education system. Thank you.